Hello, everybody, and welcome to Neurotic News. Uh, what's going on, Rathi? Oh, yeah, not much. Hey, just um, just hitting up all the local um, bistros. Hey, what have bistros. you been up to? Well, have you been hitting up bistros? Well, I call yeah, cafes, I guess they're called. What's the difference between a cafe and a bistro? I think a bistro, you can get a steak sandwich. I associate a bistro <laughs> with a, a, a steak sandwich and shoestring fries. Right. So it's and more like, like a, a, a pub thing, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a Saturday lunch vibe. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, I've found a new cafe. So um, I don't know how long that'll last because, you know, they start getting to know you and stuff. Yeah. And you move you, around. Then you got to move around. Like I remember one mob, I was going there all the time because you want to get out of the house to write. And uh, yeah. at one point it got too intimate. Like they started coming to my shows and then he started, he, he sat me down one day and he so, showed me a trailer for a new Star Wars game. Yeah. And I was like, this is too over. Intimate. This is over. It's too, uh, yeah. I remember I had a regular place and then I left. I went to, I went to Melbourne for two weeks and then the barista tracked me down and DM'd me. What? And he goes, is it something I said? Whoa, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I guess I'd been every day, right, for so long. Wow. The, the two-week absence, he's obviously gone down a paranoid spiral. How insecure are you when you're a barista <laughs> and you track down an individual customer and DM them on social media? That's... Yeah. Like, I thought I was bad, but that's... <laughs> That's that's like me finding a punter who came to a show. Hey, look, man, I worked out your name and stuff. Just wanted to show, like, uh, you didn't look like you enjoyed the show. Like, is that me or? Or even worse going, hey, man, I noticed you've come to a few shows in the past, but I've been analyzing ticket sales from the last year and I haven't seen your name pop up on the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Is it something I did or? Wow. Is it a weird? Like... Or even, um, if, yeah. Weird. What did you say to the barista in the, in I the said, DM? I, I, it was so long ago, but I either didn't respond or said, no way. I'm just away for two. Like, I can't remember what I did because wow. I can imagine either not replying or saying, no, I'm just away. Wow. That, imagine leaving him on scene. <laughs> Like, it, like you've seen the message and it's like, he's like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? You haven't been in for a while. Is this something I did? Or you just like, like how much that would fuck his head up? Because he'd just be like, wow, I'm insane. Like I've reached out to this guy and he's just like, I'm not responding to my fucking barista. The, the irony is you actually really like had nothing. You liked him before. Yeah. Now but, now, but now he's like, he's, now he's like, definitely. I said something definitely. Now. But you're like, no, there was stuff for a problem. It's so easy to ruin people's <laughs> lives now. Like just momentarily ruin their joy of just life. poor, poor kerosene on their neuroses. Yeah. Just let <laughs> just fire. Like, Oh man. I've had people like dating and stuff when people intentionally ghost you or leave you seen. It's like, Oh, worse. yeah. But, um, I'm going I guess to, like to the barista. Yeah, you go to the barista, which is um, it's a new low, uh, maybe a new low for him, really. Um, there's this new cafe the other day, right? Because I'd just been going there to get a single coffee. Because basically, yeah. I don't, I, I don't like to, I don't like to drink too much coffee. A and B, I it's often don't, I don't eat in the mornings. You know what it's I mean? Like intermittent yeah. fasting. Yeah, that and just yeah. So I get the passive aggressive, like, are you going to, so, you know, the food here is pretty yeah. good kind of thing. And I realized like I'm sitting in this area of the cafe. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bustling cafe. There's a lineup outside, you know, they serve food and um, I'm in this corner of the cafe and I look around and I realize it's just balding middle-aged men with laptops that <laughs> only have ordered one drink, like the whole yeah. area. Like none of them had food. They'd only had one drink and people were coming and going. Like they were doing their business in the cafe just on the most minimal purchase. And I was just in the middle of them with a laptop as well. And I was like, fuck, I'm one of these guys. 
Yeah, you start resenting them even though you're doing the same thing. Yeah, because they're because they remind you. Yeah, yeah. You're like that's a bit like me. Fuck them. Yeah, like, I'm you like start- order something. You fucking fat cunt. Like order something. <laughs> well, then you can be the only one nursing the cappuccino then, because yeah. like it's not as bad. Because when it's like you and six other guys on laptops with, you know, two pays and like <laughs> tepid lattes. <laughs> <laughs> it starts feeling like you're in a startup. You're like you're hot desking the cafe. Yeah. I mean, like people pay really good money to be in a, a workspace away from home. Like they rent a space. There's this like we work. Um, yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Isn't that what it's called? We, we, we working? Or? Yeah. There's like apps. There's all sorts of stuff. You can look up places to rent that have a creative collaborative Bean vibe. bag. Yeah. You can have a space there. Yeah, Wi-Fi and stuff, and these guys are just paying four bucks, just the price of a single shot coffee. And one guy had people here yeah, who was having like job, like <laughs> like interviews and shit. People were coming and going, and imagine if it's you funny were, just like, have a rolodex of people just coming yeah, in, like people a Ferris come, wheel of freebies, down, like they're just having tap water, just tap water, thanks. <laughs> but they're still entitled. Yeah, we 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 ask some tap water. Yeah. <laughs> Could we get the address here? Because I want to get some um, documents mailed. Like, can I have my own little like in and out box and shit of documents at the cafe? <laughs> hey, uh, just just going in to buy like a single sparkling water and going like, hey, uh, did a package arrive? I sent it to this address. Like, just getting yeah, way yeah, too familiar. Just watching like comedy TikToks off their Wi-Fi, just like losing your shit. You know, people who like giggle at cafes by themselves. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> like they've, <laughs> like, they've just got their phone like, Hoo-hoo! like just, just giggling with a four dollar coffee for four hours. Yeah, just taking up space. People are lining up to order big meals worth a hundred bucks. Yeah, some guy like because when you're there, like if like I went on a Saturday, I just sat myself down at the bench, and the barista came over and said, "Who let you in?" You know, like I was a stray dog. Because, because, you, because it's you like, come in every week, every day and just order on a Saturday, single coffee. Yeah, yeah. But on Saturday, that's like stealing. Because yeah. your bet, you're taking up a whole bench. That could be six spanner crab omelets. Yeah. But you're just could be a, a little coffee. Yeah. Like a piccolo. For four hours. Yeah. And they're like, no, that's theft. That's like you're stealing $1,000. Like we've got a 12 brunch. 12 person brunch line up here. I remember one time, um, yeah, I took up a whole table of like six chairs, put my laptop down and started getting really busy. And then I went out and one of my mates called me, Dan and uh, another Dan, and he, uh, he's a heroin addict and he called me and just unloaded, like just unloaded <laughs> about his life, which is what he does. Just like all the people that have betrayed him and just cat- catastrophic. I lost my car again. Like, and I'm just on the phone like that. And the, the the dude who owns a cafe is just coming out like, hey, so you're going to like started like making up shit, like going like, hey, I think someone's trying to steal your laptop, <laughs> like trying to get me desperately to go back in and just like, just, just like, like hundreds of dollars worth of food that he can't just because I've got a single coffee and a laptop sitting on his, on his table. There's no vocabulary for the crime that you're committing there. Like, because it's almost yeah. like an opportunity cost crime. Like you're indirectly costing them hundreds of dollars, but it's yeah. not direct theft, but they still have to be like, Hey, was everything good? Do you know what I mean? But they're like, fuck you, fuck you, son of a bitch. Like it's true. Hey, what's the crime for going into a cafe and treating it like your tech space, but you're technically <laughs> buying the most minimal thing you can buy. <laughs> Yeah, there's some kind of vocabulary for that evil that hasn't been created yet. Yeah. <laughs> hot desking without cause. Like hot, hot desking without justification, without... Yeah. Yeah, there's just no way to quantify the, the, the act that you're doing. Well, I've had people call me on it. Like one pommy guy in Perth when I was going there every day. Like he goes, oh, look, the... The electricity, the Wi-Fi, taking up the table, yeah. the water. You know, I'm not making any money on you, mate. I just called me on. Wow. And I was like, you fucking dog. Like, it made me so angry that 
I wanted to, I kept fantasizing about going and going, well, I was going to have a big meeting with all the comedians here, Arj Barker, and like kept her fantasies about telling him all these big people is going to bring in and we're going to have a big meal. We now have a big brekkie. It. Yeah. We had planned a big brekkie, but not anymore. The cafe's fucking empty anyway, you stupid, tight ass fucking English cunt, you know? <laughs> like I'm fucking coming in and sitting in there. And, you know, like it's better to have someone in there nursing a coffee. Yeah, it's an advertisement for the cafe. Yeah. Like someone enjoys the ambience. <clears throat> anyway. But it's, um, yeah, that's crazy to do that. It's funny when you get called out on something, you can still be righteously angry. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, you call in sick and you're bot- like, but you're not. And your boss is like, bullshit. And you're like, how dare you? Like, like you have no reason not to believe me. Like I've called in sick. Like what yeah. evidence do you have that I'm lying? Like, it's almost like rude for them to. Yeah. How dare you act like I'm lying when I am? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're insulting my integrity, which I have none, but you're. Yeah. But you don't know you that. You have no reason to know that. Yeah. You don't know that. How do you know that? <laughs> How dare you? It's weirdly rude, even though yeah. they're in the right. How dare you assume it that I'm a I'm a liar, which I am. But you know, it's not right to assume it. So when the barista like comes and tells you the economic model they base their business on, and they're right, you're still like, "Fuck you! I'm going to burn this place down." Yeah. Because how dare you believe in yourself enough to assert <laughs> yourself like that? <laughs> it's funny, and not right? just bottle it up as resentment. Yeah. Like everyone else. Um, the other day I was um, on public transport going to South Bank and um, a meth head got on and started a big argument, like on speaker. Oh, yeah, the speaker phone. Yeah, Bandits. like with a hotline or something like, I fucking said I don't have that cunt. Like just like. Yeah, yeah. It's It's always like a drama of Shakespearean proportions. Like it's a tragedy. It's always like, you treat me like a cunt. It is over. Like <laughs> it's either revenge or betrayal. Like it's either one of that. It's it's like a Shakespearean, like King Lear, like Hamlet, like get away from me. Yeah. I will come, I'm coming for you now. Like it's, <laughs> It's almost like Senator it's, Palpatine. <laughs> it's true though. Like on public transport, when you see meth heads or bogans, it's like you're yeah. fucking dead. Like it's real, like Shakespearean in the sense that it's either death or love or fucking like it's all the extremities. It's like, I need it, this now. Where are you? And they're just like I pacing. fucking loved you, but now you treat me like a hunt. Like it's, it's yeah, it's, real. It's all betrayal, like Shakespearean. You know, Shakespeare's pretty much built on betrayal. You promised yeah. me that you'd be there, and you're fucking not because you're a liar. Yeah, that's on speakerphone for the whole carriage to enjoy in between sips of two liters of Mountain Dew. That's the real and, theater. Yeah, that's because middle class people they're just like it's all that passive type stuff. It's like oh, you forgot the zucchini because of your mother, presumably. Like it's all just like under the surface and then they end up ruminating on that comment yeah. for like months as they go yeah. to like sound baths and, and meditation chambers, just thinking yeah. about like. They're in a float tank of magnesium to relax and have a deep meditation. All they're thinking about is what does he mean by my mother? My mother's yeah, done that- good things for her and she has no respect for him. And, you know, like it's all internal, subtle. Yeah. It's like maybe, maybe it's because they're undermining me, but who knows? I could be wrong. Yeah. I could be wrong. But but the bogan thing and on and meth heads on the on the train and public transport, that's the real, that's the real, you know. The money is gone. I'm coming for the money. <laughs> I'm outside. I will slit your throat. <laughs> like it's all Shakespearean. It's the same, but if you put a Shakespearean accent on a meth heads bogan like argument, it's the uh, yeah. It's the same. Yeah. It's like in Bogan accents, like you're fucking dead, cunt. You fucking lied. I know. I seen yeah. that. One, one I heard him saying, like, how could I have fucked her? They locked the public toilets at night. Yeah. How could have they, Milige, done that when they locked thy away? Like it's. Yeah. 
the palace the same was thing. the palace was locked at night. I would not slither in like a criminal and have had intercourse with this woman. It's outrageous. Malige? I Malige? was not yeah. fucking her in the fucking dunnies. The dunnies are locked at night. Not You're done, cunt. Yeah. The dunnies like... were locked. You're done. Yeah. I, it's I don't great. know how many times I've seen like a meth head in the city, like not even on the phone, like just yeah. in Melbourne or whatever, just going like, well, you fucking, you done it now, cunt. Like, and, like just yeah. to themselves, <laughs> yeah. like he's worked out. You know, and he's going. Which also to... makes sense. It makes sense that they vocalize that because that's very Shakespearean to have a monologue where you just monologue. You're like, and yeah. that's why Terry never came back. Never came back. He's disgusting. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I've got one. They go around. He just goes around going, is a disgusting American? A disgusting yank? Like just over and over. <laughs> yeah, it's a Shakespearean aside, like where they take us an aside to the theatre and the spotlight just comes on. Spotlight, there. yeah. The background goes like, <laughs> Terry fucking lied to me, the dog. He fucking sold my boat for meth. I fucking know he did. Become... <laughs> I know I've worked it out, you know. They're holding a skull for some reason, just in the CBD. Just Yeah, a possum skull. They've just got a skull. Found a fucking skull in the gutter. <laughs> Reminds me of me, dad. Yeah, like that's... It's it's sort of that yeah it's so high proportion but then the middle class they still get the theater the Sydney theater company brochure yeah and they're like let's see Hamlet let's we'll see get a an more postmodern adaptation of Hamlet it's like if you want to see that go into the CBD at about ten thirty get a train to the theater yeah you'll get there and be like oh we've had enough like yeah I'm get a train to the theater, theater and that there'd, there'd be a, a, a bogan having an argument with the bank. On speaker, I yeah, yeah. sent my ID. Can't like you know. Yeah, like, it's like that. Centrelink is tapping my phone. Can't like it's that kind of stuff. Yeah, paranoia. Like, it's like there's a very, there's a real paranoia to Shakespeare. Like King yeah. is like I told you, my son has turned against me. Yeah, once again, <laughs> the horses, the wolves are coming <laughs> for the castle. Like it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what's in the meth set. He's like, the wolves are coming. Like my phone is being tapped by Asia. Like it's like it's they've got the same paranoia, revenge, betrayal. But yeah. then the middle class is like, I'm not paranoid. I'm 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 fine. I'm seeing someone about it. We've talked about it, and I need to change my diet. Um, more fiber. Yeah. I'm diversifying my gut microbiome so I can minimize those late night ruminations. I guess like it's, it's flipped more... really, hasn't it? It's flipped because like, I guess when Shakespeare was around, it was the upper class that were like, you won't kill me, but off with their heads. Like we'll jewels invade. and stuff. Yeah, we'll invade. I'll fight him to the death. And and the lower classes were like, I don't know, Malaysia, I might go get, you know, I'll go get some bread. Like, you know, like it's sort of- They flipped. were chilled. They were yeah. chilled. And they were just Oliver happy Twist with, and stuff. They were happy with their lot or whatever. Yeah. He's like, I'll have a porridge. Yeah. It tastes good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's uh, like the porridge is fucked, my liege. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's poisonous. Yeah, it's slipped. Yeah. Been poisoned. Like, now the upper middle classes are like quite like not dramatic. And then the, the working class are like the, the real it, dramatic theater. If you're on a train, if you're on the Great Circle line and there's a meth head, you know, accusing his wife of poisoning him. I mean, that's straight from Hamlet. Or that is actually from Hamlet. Yeah. He's like, you're poisoning me, bitch. Like, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you hear like, stuff like that. that. I mean, if you think about it, drugs didn't exist in medieval yeah. times. Think about that. They could drink, but no one was on ice. Yeah. Ice like probably there... gets you in contact with all the Shakespearean emotions of drama. Yeah. Paranoia, jealousy. Yeah, you need more money. You're more paranoid. You're more on edge. You're more dramatic. Yeah, they've, they're in touch with a full spectrum of emotions that are sort of have been repressed in the middle class. Yeah. You know, if you imagine being on ice and being stuck in that thing in the village where they put your hands and your head through the fucking thing and they throw food at you. <laughs> yeah. Coming down from ice. He was on ice last <laughs> night and he went into the tavern and screamed and carried yeah, yeah. on. And now he must have throw rotten fruit at him for a week. Is come. that what coming down on meth feels like? Just being in the village, having people <laughs> throw fruit at you? 
Yeah. Like maybe that's what the come down feels like. It's just like, like, oh fuck, like just getting hit by stuff. Metaphorical. Like I said yeah. that, who that person's against me. I owe their money. Like just like the metaphorical tomatoes. It's just a constant spot because you're drinking Mountain Dew, eating beef jerky out of a fanny pack, going around on a train with your best friend who hates you and just attacking each other. You know how there's like always two of them together? Yeah. yeah. Like there's one always who's a bit of in front of the other one. Yeah. And the other one's sort of hunchbacked. He's like, like coming, like he's behind. And the other one's like gesturing at him, trying to cross lights to get on another bus or whatever. Meanwhile, the middle class are just making slight passive aggressive comments in cafes. <laughs> like, oh, you haven't ordered much food, have you? That's mm. interesting. Oh, well, I suppose I should order some food if I'm going to use your facilities. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we were profiled in Good Food magazine. I don't know if you read print media. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like it's a... Yeah. You're like, but maybe I will. Mm. You got to go to your therapist and be like, the cafe thinks I don't spend enough money there, but I'm coming in. I mean, isn't that okay? Of course it's okay. (laughs) Just pathetic. Yeah, yeah. Try to be generous in your readings. Passive aggression can be actually a compliment. (laughs) One is like you're falling apart, even though you have everything. And the other is desperation, like less privileged, you know, like outwardly. But we're like we we we're privileged middle class people have everything, so we find less dramatic shit to worry about. I guess. Do you think that's why, like, when the you know bourgeois people go to like the theatre to watch Shakespeare, it's like they want to see Shakespeare, but just on stage. They don't yeah. want to like inter. They don't want interactive dinner theatre. They don't want conflict. Yeah, because on the train, the actors will interact with you if you watch them. <laughs> Yeah, so the public transport you think is an immersive theatre experience. Yeah, it's an immersive theatre experience. So, yeah, you don't want that because the actor can come up to you and do the monologue in your face. It was so real. Fucking look at me again, cunt. I'll fucking knock your teeth out, okay? Wow. (laughs) Yeah, you want it like it's on the stage. There's an intermission and so on. Wine and stuff. Because, because like, I remember, like, when I was young, mental health, like, you know, like, admitting that you were depressed or something like that would be the craze. Like, you would never, like, I grew up in Toowoomba. It was such a backwards place. Yeah. Like, like it's hard to fathom. But, like, take, for example, just to give you an idea, like, a coffee shop opened up for the first time. This is in the 90s. Yeah, the first cafe. Yeah, and it was just coffee club. So it's just a franchise, shitty. But that was so pretentious to us in Toowoomba that we used to drive past after work and like yell out the window, excuse me, would I like a Chino? And then go, (laughs) and do burnouts in front of them. So we thought it was so like, ooh, coffee (laughs) club. Like we just thought that was bourgeois. Because we're, you know, Toowoomba, there's like a railway, a McDonald's, a creek. And then just like the coffee club next to a tent shop. You know what I mean? Like, and how I just, far things have come. Yeah. It's funny that the dude driving the car, you, you know, was Will. So he's like stone doing burnouts. Now you wouldn't think that he'd go on to be a world champion if you were in the cafe. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. A chino. Anyway. Yeah. Um, a chino as well. Yeah. A cappuccino. A chino. Ooh. Like we just thought it was so funny that people would drink. Like we thought that was fancy. Now, if you were like, hey, man, do you want to meet at coffee club? People are like, what happened to you? Are you okay? Yeah, you bogan. You like, like They'd be like, what, you want to go to coffee? Like, you know, like yeah. it's just, it'd be like, what? Yeah. I'll Tom meet you at just coffee club. So out of touch. So out of touch. It was crazy. Just a violent, dark town. Like I had this bit in my set at the moment where I'm like, people in the nineties hated people who ate salads. Cause it was like this, that four and 20 ad four and pie, oh, four and yeah, 20 yeah. pie ad where they look into the restaurant. There's a guy eating a salad and they're like, reckon he knows what he's missing out on, which is a bit like, you know, yeah. reckon we should bash him for eating a salad. Cause he's got a fucking. I love that ad. Cause you got the two high vis guys. Yeah. And, but there's a guy like eating like an endive salad or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever the salad of the nineties was. Yeah. Like in Toowoomba, like- that would be a death sentence. 
Yeah. Like, so like, like you eating a salad, mate. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Yeah. 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 Eating a fucking salad, mate. Hey, eh? they'd be like, <laughs> no, that's not mine. I swear. Like you get bashed. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying yeah. that on stage and I could tell people couldn't relate. And I'm like, wow, that's a real Toowoomba thing. Like it was so backwards. Be like to get bashed for having a salad. Oh, fucking salad, mate. Want you to fucking steak. Yeah. I want more fiber in my diet. Fucking fibers for pussies, mate. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now all those guys are on the keto diet, all those tough guys. Yeah. Now they're all just fucking micro dosing LSD and monitoring their blood levels when they fucking do ice baths. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I was I was reading about one that he converted to Christianity because it like lowers your blood glucose like on his watch. <laughs> like one of these That's fucking absurd. One of these bro scientists. It's so crazy. He's like, it turns out being religious actually lowers inflammation, uh, optimizes blood glucose. He's like, so now me and my family are Presbyterians. <laughs> What the fuck, man? How can you believe in something for its physical benefits? Like as in like as spiritually speaking, I mean. Well, because he's a scientist and he's coming at it from a fully atheistic perspective. Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, but how can optimizes- he believe it though? I mean, like he's like, yeah, no, Jesus did die on the cross and then floated into the sky and he's <laughs> the representative of God, the Holy Spirit as one that is three. Yeah. He's I like, mean, you- the guy is sick. That's insane. So yeah, he believes like he does communion and all that shit. Like he's he, they go to church and stuff because it's wow. purely f- for optimizing his, his <laughs> longevity. So he just wants to live forever, and part of Fucking that means hell. like just somehow gaslighting yourself into believing Jesus died for your sin. It's so insane. That's so bizarre. I can't even wrap my head around that. It's literally no irony as well. It's like religion actually reduces inflammation. And it's like, that's why we're Presbyterians. Like it's, it's almost like wow. atheism coming full circle. Wow. Fascinating. I mean, the guy is ripped. <laughs> He'd want to be a eh? fucking hell. He'd want to be. He's been on the cover of men health, men health. <laughs> Oh, he's that man. type that type of guy, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, sex is actually good for your brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like man. he doesn't enjoy it. Yeah. He's wow. like, I, 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 coming will actually help you sleep, which is good. You get deeper REM if you Sorry, ejaculate just like, into, a- <laughs> into a towel. <laughs> it's best to ejaculate into your cum towel because. <laughs> <laughs> it raises heart rates and uh, gives you a cardio, a vascular workout, as opposed to ejaculating on your wife's ass. Which can cause depression in some rodents. Why don't you come in me stuck. anymore? Because coming inside you is not as good for my cardiovascular system. I prefer to come onto my cum rag. It gives me a greater boost. It's like American Psycho, fucking hell. I choose to have sex in the morning. It raises my heart rate before I have my first coffee of the day. Yeah. The caffeine then gets my cortisol going enough in the optimal zone so that I can do my high intensity interval training, which adds 20% to my longevity. I like it when I have diarrhea. It cleans out my uh, intestinal system and... uh, yeah, it's like Siri. It's like a ro- It's like people worry about robots replacing us, but we're becoming robots. <laughs> like oh, he's like, awesome. I optimize my blood. You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. like oh, they're going to replace all the uh, doctor jobs with AI. It's like, no, you're measuring your blood glucose with a watch going seventy four optimal. <laughs> like, gonna live forever because I ate a curry with turmeric. Wow! Like you're you're becoming your own optimization algorithm. Wow. These guys. That's so it's good. So funny. <laughs> Why get married when you can own a Labrador? You can, you can come into your cum rag and spoon a Labradoodle. Labradoodle has the same is effect. The best dog for lowering in depression and anxiety. I come into my cum rag to lower my heartbeat. Then I invite my dog onto the bed and it calms me into a place where I have a lower heart rate, which is perfect after my cum rag come. 
Then my wife comes and she <laughs> complains about how I no longer enjoy sex with her. And I told her straight because arguments are good for the brain. I said, sweetheart, I no longer have sex with you because intercourse is not as good for my skin as ejaculating into my cum rag. She said she understood, but I could tell that she was lying to me because lying is often not as good for you to receive. It's a negative. So when she lies, I put on music. I like to listen to Green Day, the older albums. The older albums are better with melody. <laughs> yeah, good I listen to, rate. if I'm trying to sleep, I listen to an audio book of the Talmud because it strengthens neuron connections to because Jews are smart. So I play Jews their are books. Smarter. Their I play books. their books. Yeah, as much as I can. I like to listen to the, the screaming, Old screaming. The Scrolls of Babylon are interesting read if you want to get deep REM sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got to be optimized. Yeah, this guy won't do anything for an ulterior motive. So he goes like into a, you, a restaurant and they're like, please, sir, sit and we've got a table right here for you. I would rather not sit there. It's near a fluorescent light, which is going to negatively impact my sleep tonight. He wears blue light goggles to restaurants and shit. Like, so that blocks the light of the menu reflecting. Like he's like, he can't go to the movies because sitting's bad. So he like has to stand and like do squats. Imagine going to the movies with that guy. Can like what's the guy doing in A3 doing? Like he's doing squats during the Joker. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got that crazy laugh. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, one, yeah. two, three. Sorry, I'm doing breathing exercises in the Hoyt's Megaplex. I bought my cum rag into the cinema because I find that if I can ejaculate during... <laughs> it's just it all, all about comes back to the cum rag. <laughs> I find coming into my cum rag biannually best. It's best to only do it once every financial year. I like to come into a cum rag because it helps your investments. It helps your investment portfolio to ejaculate into an inanimate <laughs> rag. <sighs> and not a humanoid. My wife is a humanoid, as am I. We're Presbyterians because it optimizes my Google watch. <laughs> I like we that. Like the are dom domestic, <laughs> domestic arguments are better than a Sudoku puzzle. Forgetting the your other, frontal lobe of workout. The other day, I took the feces out of the toilet. And yeah. place it to have a closer examination of how complete the turds are. A complete turd is a sign of high fiber, which is excellent. Here's some pictures Great. of my shit. My friend has schizophrenia. He has schizophrenia, so I have a diverse gut microbiome, so I took a dump on his chest. <laughs> it's all this biohacker stuff, you know? They'll take a shit on someone's chest for... If you shit on improved. a schizophrenic friend's chest, you'll find that he's able to calm down and have a better blood pressure. Become neurotypical, so to speak. That's the thing with the, <laughs> like a part thing. of your, the thing <laughs> that, that really be right up there is the weirdest thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> They'll become Why neurotypical. Shitting on a schizophrenic person's chest. Because the gut, the gut and the brain are connected. Oh, so the shit. So is like, good schizophrenic shit weird so like if they get a shit transplant from a neurotypical for them they could start being becoming normal and going to brunch bottomless brunches and stuff so if you stick shit up a schizophrenic's ass they're like yeah <laughs> a fecal transplant in a schizophrenic you could make them normal like they could be like yes i like work at nando's now <laughs> Like you could reintegrate them back into society through I feces. I used to draw patterns on the wall that I thought were about opening a por portal to another dimension and uh, of secret language that I only kept for myself and my imaginary friends in my head. But then I got shit put up my ass. Yeah. <laughs> and now I work at Nando's. Now I make spicy chicken burgers <laughs> for the office workers during lunch hour. <laughs> Like he's got him on the same biohacker thing. I reckon we're the losing biohacker thing. Few, we're losing the thing with the bio over this one. But I, I think the biohacking thing is interesting because, like, I sort of respect them more than a GP almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like something right, aren't they? Because they'll inject like a goat stem cells into their knee and stuff. Like they've got skin in the game. Right. They're doing it. But it's not. 
but it's not like your GP is like on Adderall trying it out. Mm. You know, he's like, I guess yeah. this is good. The I biohack is like, he took a shit on my chest. It was amazing. You're like, okay, let's look into that. Like if you were willing to do it. You're saying they put their money where their mouth is. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, they're obviously mentally ill as hell. It's just a weird mental illness where you look ripped and young. Yeah, so no one sections you. Yeah. Like they don't put those guys in a straitjacket. Like that guy should be in an asylum. Yeah. Why is he doing star jumps during the Joker? Oh, he's just into wellness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his because whole the... life is the wellness thing. Yeah. So is he really living or is he just fulfilling a job? Which is so, to be... Well, if, if you said to him, hey, man, eat this cherry, mm-hmm. it's yummy. He'd be like, what do you mean it's yummy? Right. You know, okay. there's no intrinsic value to anything. If you stick the cherry up your ass... It uh... <laughs> act it activates charcoal that's lodged in your colon, and that will help uh, keep your gut microbiome. Yeah, fucking hell. It's never like oh, I went to do this thing because it was so fun, and I don't know why. I lost myself in dance. He'd be like, "I'm losing myself in dance so I can sweat and raise heart rate." Yeah, it's it, he's mentally ill, obviously, right? Because he's a he's a prisoner to optimization. Like it's a fascinating type of mental illness. Yeah, it's it's one that's celebrated. Yeah, some mental illness culturally is celebrated, celebrated. You know, that one I feel like is celebrated now. Well, there's good and bad mental illnesses. Like, like yeah. a sociopath has suffered immensely in their life, which is why they're a sociopath. It comes from suffering and trauma. But they're but also a team is, leader. They're also a CEO. Yeah who uh, runs an oil company that's drilling in the Arctic and killing baby seals. And they're like, that's interesting. What's the profit? Yeah. Like, anyway, they're just like a mental illness that people hate because you can't go, oh, what do you mean he tied a series of people up and murdered them and felt nothing? Is he okay? You know what I mean? Yeah, no one thinks about him. Yeah, 